Well, it's day two of my buying trip and I am really excited to be at this place because a lot of other people have shopped through here and I have always been doing the show and never had a chance. So here's where we are. We are at Heart of Ohio Antique Mall and we are going to meet with the Burner Brothers who are the recently new owners of this and they're gonna show us around and we are gonna have such a good time because they have an amazing store with so many cool things. So Jocelyn from Crazy Lamp Lady and Drew and Laurel are here. We are meeting the Burner Brothers to have an interview on their YouTube channel. And then we are going shopping and Kate from Follow That Bug Vintage is going to join us at the end. So this is going to be fun. I mean, you barely get inside the door. And here's a $2,000 Yadro gondola with all the wonderful color and all of the great design. And that's just opening the door to this place. This place really is enormous. There are aisles going out in every direction and you could spend days here. Well, we are going to start with the showcases because a little bird told me that some of these things might be available at prices that I can afford. And there are some really cool things in here. I really like the Arabia pieces. This Sargadeos bird is an interesting piece of modernism there. They have a couple of Sasha Brostoff trays. I'm very partial to this swordfish. This one is Jaru from California, and they made really great stuff. You can see the RU at least. I think you can read all of Jaru on the bottom. $45 is a really good price, but it's got just a little nick on the tail, unfortunately. These pieces that have all the points do sometimes get those problems. Good price on the Russell Wright pitcher there. The cedar green color, that's a little more unusual. Look how fun the Italian fish is too. I am glad to be seeing some mid-century looking things because my next show is in Florida and I have an audience for them there. And I have my space at Vintage Modern St. Pete that can use some merchandise as well. And yet I see some really neat old items that are of interest too. This is a gaudy ironstone covered jar here. Some nice flow blue from the 19th century. And then we get into the mesh purses. And I've always done well buying mesh purses in this area. I really do like the pink one, especially if the color is good and that's intact. I would be interested in that. At 3100 I won't be taking this, but it is a really hard to find piece. This orange julep that's very early soda fountain collectible from about 1915 to 1920. That would have been the syrup that sat there and then you mixed it with the carbonation because we didn't have soda machines that just did that for you back then. Carstairs White Seal is a very famous name in alcohol. That's priced at 165. The Blue Mirror is a 1930s fad that was very popular at the time and found its way into a lot of furniture. And look at that tree topper angel from about 1900. That's a very, very hard thing to find. It could use a new hairpiece, but the rest of it seems to be in really good condition. And that is priced at $75. That's a pretty scarce item. A couple more mesh purses and this nice reticule. A viewer of mine mentioned the other day that the larger reticules like this were done earlier because women had to put their fans in them. And then when carrying a fan became less of a fashion statement, then the bags got smaller. This is really cool. Deposit a quarter and take a look. Stereoscopic Mills Instrument Viewer. This is really a neat thing from an old Nickelodeon, although nowadays a quarter. So let's see if we can see what's here to show us. There it is, motion pictures as they were. Lovely women. Look how beautiful this is. This is a very high-end antique mall that gets really good quality stuff. Now they get lots of fun things that regular collectors would buy, but this is for somebody with a very, very fancy house. This is a Raffaello Romanelli sculpture called Firenze from Florence and it is priced at $9,000. It looks like it would date to sometime about 1910 or 20 because of the use of the various colors of marble. She's just gorgeous. Beautiful French set here. The clock with the two urns. This is priced at $1,195. It is transferware rather than hand painted and then the gilding is laid by hand. A lot of nice porcelain. France really was the center of expensive clock making production in the 1870s and 80s and these should date to about that time. 
They do have some neat furniture here, and even though I'm not really looking for large pieces right now, I can't help but notice this fantastic hardware store display with the spinner mounted on top of a base. That's something that's unusual. I haven't seen a two-piece before like this, and that's why this is $4,900 for the set, because it's unusual to have those two pieces together. Capiche shell lamps. I have one of these in my storage unit that needs to be unwound and put out for sale. When they get tangled, oh my goodness, they are some work. But they were very big in the 1970s and they're very collectible now. And then there's this crazy furry thing. <laughs> if Chewbacca was a chair, he would look like this. But this actually is a designer piece. And you can see there it is Adrian Pearsall. Craft Associates did these. This raccoon upholstery is unusual. I've seen these before generally just in a smooth finish. So this one is a little bit more unusual. There is actually one of these in the smooth finish for sale at Lander Street Vintage in Seattle right now. And that's the last time I saw one on my travels all the way from here to Ohio. So they're not common. As much as I see Fenton custard glass that glows under a black light, I do not see the lime custard very often. This is $79, and really for the large hobnail boat in that color, that's a pretty good price. This blue decanter with the handle is Bischoff. They were one of the only companies that applied handles to take something similar to a ewer and turn it into a decanter. The lamp with the original shade and the cork base at 125 is not a bad price. These cork bases are hard to find. A lot of people used them with push pins back in the day and used them to hang notes, which was very clever. It also eventually chipped them up. So you really want to look and see if the finish is smooth. This one's pretty good. I see one little rough spot there, but this is definitely something that I think could sell for more in another venue. Usually when we see really tall swung vases, they are the fat round ones. You almost never see the pedestal swung vases this tall. This one is a Viking drape. And in this extremely large size, it's priced at 600 because the really unusually large sized ones are scarce. And they've only become scarcer with all the collector interest now. Sunglasses are something to buy because it's sunny somewhere in the world all the time. These are an Elena Rubinstein. That's definitely considered part of couture of that era, and that is why these are priced at $199. They are marked made in France, so you know that they're the original. What amazes me about this store is how if they have one cameo, they have 20. They have such amazing selection here. This mall is so huge and the quality is so good. And it's because they really make an effort to promote this place. They just had someone in here from Iowa buying a bunch of stuff. They are definitely encouraging of people coming long distances and making large buys. And so they will work with you where they can. But they have a lot of stuff that you just don't see very much. And that's what really is the draw here. The Cambridge nude stems, we just don't run into these anymore. They have prices between $30 and $100, depending on the stem. So those are all buyable prices for these pieces. Very collectible from the 1930s. And actually, this entire grouping appears to be Cambridge glass. Cambridge was made in the town of the same name here in Ohio. I do see a Weller piece in there. But most of... The glass pieces you see here are Cambridge, including the Blue Caprice, which was the first thing I was ever asked for when I worked in an antique mall, and I had no idea what it was. By the end of the day, I had fallen in love with Blue Caprice. Silver plate toothpicks, anybody? A huge collection here. These folks really do get a lot of nice big collections of things all at once, and so that's why there's so much variety in these places. Just the lighting is so much fun in this one. And I like this plaque. This is interesting. It's priced at $1,450. The signature is a Spada, and it is fiberglass. Fiberglass was a medium that got a lot of interest in the 1960s, and you see art installations made of them. Here's a cute whole china piece. This is the Lavabo, where you've got the font and then the piece that it would drip into if you actually could use it. This one is just for decorations because obviously you can't turn the spigot. But these lavabos, as they call them, L-A-V-A-B-O, 
were very popular in the 1960s as decorative items. $75 for the two pieces in good piece is actually a good deal for the whole butterfly. These tiki gods were made of reconstituted lava ground and turned into a material that they could cast. These were designed by Ray Murray after he left Treasure Craft. And this was the last major thing he did in his career was to make these designs for Coco Joes. Well, this dealer got the memo that the Vaseline glass Viking birds are worth something, but woo, 800, wow. This sinister guy is really cool. He's $100. He is a toothpick made of cast iron, and these date to about 1910, 1920. We see these shaped bowls, and they're generally not marked. This is Barbini. This particular shape is a Barbini shape that you will recognize if you see it enough. And it's priced at $135 because this dealer does recognize it. The dealers here are definitely knowledgeable about this stuff. Irwin and Estelle Laverne from Chicago were really well known for metalwork and modernism and brass tables and things, but they also did this design for the Lincoln Center. Now this is a reproduction of their original design, but the original ones did go into the Lincoln Center, and this one, even as a, they say reproduction, it's really continuing production of the same thing, but more recent, and it is 2,975 because the originals are, whoa way out of there. So one thing that is new to the heart of Ohio is they have YouTube channels now, and they're really fun and interesting because the Burner Brothers do a lot more than just this. They also are auctioneers. They've been in the business for many years and they just have a real fun way about them. So um, check them out. And while you're checking that out, you can also check this out, which is a really, really neat carnival ride. Lindbergh was so amazingly popular when he flew across the Atlantic and made it and people were so excited that there were many, many, many tributes to him, including miniaturizations of his original Ryan aircraft from the factory in San Diego that he flew across. And this one was made into a carnival ride. It's priced at $62.50. These are really, really scarce and it came from the collection of Seymour Stein, who was the co-founder of Sire Records. Look at this wonderful Ansonia statue clock. That is just amazing with all of the bow knots and the gilding and the garland. It's priced at 2,500, it is just gorgeous. This piece of Satsuma stands about 36 inches tall. This is early Satsuma because the detail is good. When Satsuma first started to come to the West, it was a high-end premium for very wealthy people. Then as it became more popular, it became cheapened. It wasn't as good quality and you can tell the difference. So this is an early, early piece, late 1800s, priced at about $1,200. Laurel loves seeing the puppy. Everything is a puppy to Laurel. Little Abner and his dog patch band. It is the original. There's the box. Everybody sings and plays and does what they're supposed to do. Mammy Yoakum claps along and waves her wand. It's pretty great. $9.95 for that set. Little bands like this that were built around a piano with a lot of famous characters were a popular thing in the 1920s because they were wind-ups and they could do all this neat stuff. I always like the combination of the jadeite and milk glass in these. This is the Little American Maid tea set by Acro Agate. This is priced at $175 with the original box, and it does have its lid. These 1940s comic prints are just hilarious to me. I think they're phosphorescent too, so they would glow a little bit, and that is just really fun. Pardon me, but your head reminds me of my old man's behind. Not exactly a nice thing to say. Mary had a little lamb. What'll you have? I suspect these were in a tavern at one point. Look at these neat Bakelite and Lucite pieces. I really like the ice tongs with the Lucite cube. The toucan is really fun. The butterfly is a neat piece. The carved green pin, you can't really see the carving because the tag's over it, but that's a really fun piece too. Deep carving is something that was possible in Bakelite because it was so hard but it was hard to do it really well. So when you see a really detailed carving in Bakelite, that's definitely more desirable. Laurel is done being in the wagon and she is going to command the wagon. 
Laurel is actually a great kid to have in an antique mall, believe it or not. She's so mellow and cool, and she just wants to hang out with the bears. I love seeing any of these old arrow signs. These were done in the 20s when roads were a little less definite, and you needed a sign, and they would stick these up a few miles away from any hotel in a small town to kind of try to direct you because there weren't road signs to do it for you. This is about 1930. These are both in really, really good condition. Obviously, we're not used, found new old stock somewhere, and they're priced at $3.25 each. No defective tools. Use is prohibited. The Rumpf Pottery out of California did a lot of very strange mugs in the early 70s that were done in stoneware and they were usually figurals. Sometimes you'd look in the glass and there'd be a figure inside. One was shaped like an outhouse and had a rather an appealing slogan if you were drinking out of it. <laughs> they ended up getting the contract to do the Star Wars mugs. And those are actually the most valuable of the ones they do, as you can see here. This one is priced at 75 That's actually a pretty good price for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Three of the Royal Bay Ruth Devils. The milk pitcher is hard to find because with all those little points, they tended to get chipped easily. So did the wings on the box. The tray would be the most likely to be in good condition at this point, but these are hard to find. And they're just a really neat design from the 19-teens. And it was a little bit of a comment about gambling and the fact that Maybe I don't care if you think that I'm going the devil for playing cards because I enjoy it. I was thinking it might be Higgins, but I think you might be right about Briard because I said that to myself and then I thought I'm wrong. I think it's somebody else. So I think you're probably right about Briard. I do like the box. I think it's just really well done and the fusion and the different layers on it. I mean, it's amazing this stuff isn't all destroyed when you think of all those little edges that could chip and break. Yeah, I think I had it before in a different color. Yeah, I've seen it in orange. Maybe that's the color I have. And then behind that, I think that's Catalina Island, the pottery. That, there was a time that that would have sold for double that price. Yeah, I, I've had that in pink, I think. Yeah, I think, you're right. I think I've had it in ivory. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, they're really cool. This electric fireplace is a Martin. It's got the original owner's manual in it, and it also has this very exciting crest that looks like something that one of the conquistadors would have had and that is because this was the style around the mid to late 60s particularly in Florida and California if you think of Tony Nelson's house from I Dream of Genie you would have seen motifs like this very commonly this one's priced at 949 which for the condition is not a bad price in this case everything is $20 and they have some nice things for $20 each and then there's a 10 and a 5 over here so the bargain hunter in me is going to look over here real quickly. And on this side in the $10, I see a nice little Francoma wagon wheel. But it is the Sepulpa clay, and I'm looking more for the Ada clay if I'm going to pay the extra money. New York World's Fairs tumblers. You know, they have a lot of stuff that is definitely collectible. But, you know, the prices are about where they should be. I have seen a lot of kitchen queens. There is a Hoosier company that's specifically made in Indiana. This one is a Cellars. And what's cool about this is that this one is a very small cabinet. This would have actually fit in the notch where typically you would have had the broom cupboard that you could buy with these rather than one of these. So this must have been for a very small apartment and it's very unusual and that's why it's priced at $28.75. The Schaffer and Vodder Dancers. I've always liked this flask. It's so silly and fun from the 1930s. You know the ones to go to. It gets that way. That's one thing. Yeah, for me, this is all a new store, so I don't really know, and everything is just sort of bewildering and overwhelming. But once you go through a big store like this a couple of times, yeah, you find your places. You're looking at different stuff than me, so it's like... Well, that's the other thing, too, is, yeah, I like some of the same stuff you do, and then I look for other weird things, so... I have to step back. Hey, hey up there is the face. <laughs> <laughs> so the taxidermy turkey is 900 Well, that's an interesting piece. I, I don't know that I've seen. I've only had the tails before. Yeah, they've got a lot of interesting things in here. I wanted to show this because this is Pilgrim glass, and I used to rep them. We had a factory outlet store for them in Washington for a little while. The cranberry they came out with in 1968, and this is the 1960s and 70s label because they did a whole ton of it in the late 80s and early 90s as well. But this older label is harder to find, and this piece is harder to find. $55 on it is pretty good for a decanter. The very famous Viking glass dog, priced at $199. This piece here, Jocelyn agrees with me, is probably Barbini. 
it seems like it's their color and those sort of elongated gold bubble poles. Only $79. There was a lot of interest in the early 70s in nostalgia going back to the Victorian times. And so you would see things like this where even though it's Vogue fashion footwear, which would not have looked like this at all, you see the display is trying to look very much like something from around 1900, 1910, because that was the Vogue. It's priced at $69. If I was in Seattle where the Nordstrom company buys stuff for their shoe museum, I'd probably pick this up and see if it interested them. 300? Wow. Yeah, we're not finding great uh, bargains on those anymore, are we? But it is all the bittersweet. You gotta give him credit for having that many pieces in one place. One time we were here, he was bringing in a wagon and the whole wagon was full of bittersweet. Wow. Oh. Well, I just pulled these out of my barn and I'm like, oh, it must be nice to have a whole barn full. Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, there was a time. I mean, you know, that is one thing. I, I never <laughs> I never could manage the justifying this the storage, but you know, if you're smart and you can pick up on things that might be popular in the future and hold on to them, boy, you know, he must be making money hand over fist now. Neat little Red Wing set here with a bunch of ceramic art studio figures in it. These are Phyllis Lester and she did Scraffito decoration in the late 40s, early 50s, right about the same time as Barbara Willis in California and the Brayton Laguna Company with Carol Saffholm's designs. The colors are really good gray and chartreuse very 50s priced at 105. look at this beautiful set here this is heinz sterling on bronze you see their work around 1910 which is why this has an art nouveau feel desk sets were very popular at that time they're starting to be more white collar jobs and they're starting to be more emphasis on education so you have people who have the money and the need for a desk set with a pen stand and a photo frame and the ink blotter and the ink well and the stamp box and the corners to hold the desk tray and the whole thing. So it's a pretty complete set. And that's why it's 850. This one has a 1912 patent date on it, it says. Just love old ink wells, especially when they're interesting. And this figural guy is great. I mean, he's got that incredible mustache. He looks just a little bit cross. He's priced at 195. I have not seen this one before. We just sold one of these to one of our viewers recently. There is the acid mark from 1958 to 61. And I believe I was told that this was the turquoise color. Now here's the 1980s and 90s Pilgrim Glass sticker that you see there. This I believe is the Europa line. I remember that we sold these back in the day. They are priced at $60 each now. They were not much less than that when they were new. I don't think this is a pattern she collects by them, but Laura Caldwell is big into this company, and I like them too. This is made in Israel, Upid, all hand painted, and wow, somebody got it for $4.99 at a thrift store. It's priced at $60 here, and that's about what it should be. And this one is Pilgrim's Metropolitan line from the late 1980s. And in the Cranberry, it's $60 now. That sold for more than that when it was new. Which is one thing I want to mention to some of you folks. I know some of you who are fairly new to collecting may be looking at prices on some things and saying, gee, you could get something that looked like that that was made offshore and it would be less money. If you want the real deal, it's not always that much more expensive and some things have not even held the value they had when they were new. You can get something way cooler for less money. I had forgotten about the startled Santa and Jocelyn says it looks like he's seen some things and it sure does. He's $18, which is a good price, but he always has that permanently frozen look. It definitely has that look of Polish glass, doesn't it? With the color separated in the bottom and those big swooshy designs seem like. They like the roundness. Yeah, swooshes and ovals. <laughs> I like this piece. This is a very hard to find Viking blue neat candle holder. They only have the one. They didn't do very many with the three poles and uh, it's priced at 200 because they are hard to find. Look at this menorah. Isn't this fun? It actually was done as a lamp originally, now that I see the base. That is just really cool. That looks like it's from the 1940s or 50s, and it is priced at $4.95. Okay, it's not just a blow mold Christmas tree. It's in the original box from about 1970, complete with extra bulbs, it says, at the instructions. It's priced at $135, and in this market, that seems like a pretty good price for these. Those little bracelets and stuff she likely brought back from Marona. Oh, yeah. That's definitely Millefiori beads. I have 
has a um, business card of where she bring, where she, with the shop she buys them in when she's in Verona. But I oh, interesting. Oh, I see that Ravenolo is that it with That's the um, with the box there. Twenty dollars. That's cute. Business cards in there, but I didn't see them this time. Yeah, this is really a fun case, and her prices are good. You said this is one of your viewers. Yes. Yeah. She usually messages me every time I'm coming for Springfield. She's like, I restocked the booth. Cool. Uh, this is a very, very sad sampler here from 1850. Sarah Amy Rigby passed on, and her mom did this in her honor. There were a lot of memorial samplers and fabrics like this done in the early 1800s, and they are very collectible now. You see the Globe Radio a lot. You do not see it as a Schlitz promotion very often. This one doesn't work, and they're still asking 200 but that's because they're really pretty hard to find. I think this dresser set is very cute for $23.50. It appears to be celluloid on one side, and then there's all its little pieces in the back. That is kind of beguiling. I might have to look at that closer. I like this little yellow table for $49 because of the kidney shape for Micah, but it's a little worn through. Otherwise, I'd probably get that. Vintage horn oak candy container so you could eat all those sugar pellets and get all hyped up and then blow that over and over until your parents took it away from you. So there probably aren't many left. 36 each. Fulper was the predecessor of Stangle Pottery. Stangle opened in the same location Fulper had been made. Fulper was really well known for drip glazes in the arts and crafts era along with some really wonderful metallic flick glazes. This is priced at $1.99. For a good Fulper piece that's a reasonable price. And then this is Muncie Pottery made in Indiana, and it can have a little bit of a crude feel, but they love doing these different colored glazes, and they are very popular with their collectors. Two seventy nine dollars on this, what they call the aorta vase, because it does look like the ventricles of a heart. And yes, the Pilgrim glass vases in the late 1980s, they did a lot of tassels on certain lines. So look for your old catalog information, because if it's missing the tassel, it's not complete on some of these vases. I love Higgins glass and the fish here is fantastic. There is the Higgins signature. This is priced at $129. There was a time I would have snatched it at that price. I still think there's some money in it at this price these days. Great advertising too. It's nice to see real advertising signs. I don't see reproductions in here. I do see things that people are looking for. These thermometers, I knew these would shoot up eventually and they really have. If it's anything other than the most common ones for Coca-Cola that we see a lot, they are selling in the 100 and up range. This is a difficult to find 1916 tin sign. So that's tin litho. Fairly late for tin lithography. Usually by this time you're starting to see conversion towards cardboard with printing. So she's unusual. That's why the price of 1975, you know, these things have just gotten to be very hard to find in this kind of condition. And so prices are according. And here's something that sometimes we all could use. But I like this because Cleo Cola, I mean, that just sounds exotic and interesting. This is a very different kind of display here. I see the Italian wall sconces, and those are really neat. And the pink with the bow knots, $195 for the pair seems like a pretty good price. You could certainly do an interesting wall display, as these folks have done around it. It's a bus depot sign, but this is Burlington Trailways. This is when the Burlington route Railroad actually had involvement with Continental Trailways buses. So the places they didn't serve, they could get people to thriftily, as it says. This is from about 1940. It's priced at $5.50. He did an amazing job. This is so fun. So he just specializes in advertising and country store and tins and wow. Yeah, he's got some great stuff. I like the little small coffee grinder here rather than a store size. And boy, has he got the pie birds. Now, a lot of pie birds were made in the 1980s and 90s that are reproductions, so you want to look for vintage. Some evidence that they've been used is helpful, but you can also look a lot of these up and have a pretty good idea. I will point out the two on the end here. These are Shawnee pottery. These are from about 1938 when the firm first started in those happy pastel colors. You stuck this down in the pie and then the steam vented out of the top, and that way the pie crust wouldn't break. This is all hand-drawn. This is a cartoon based on the Oddfellows someplace in Pennsylvania because the German word Donnerwetter, which means darn it, essentially, make the door shut, 
mine got eight holes. Just odd fellows, but you can see them wearing the vestments in there. Compliments of all our Hertzberger. They said this is a featured item, so if you go to their uh, website, you will see more information about it. And it appears that for this truly one-of-a-kind thing, they are asking $750. It's a very unusual fraternal order collectible. Oh, a bobble. Yeah, yeah. so good. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> this is nice too, actually. I, I couldn't resist that. The enameling is great. Yeah, I looked at this too. I think that's really nicely done. I paid a little too much for it, but I just might keep it around the house for a while, so. Oh, yeah, that's Take it. I was like, if I had this, I would just, it would just sit on my shelf. Well. I wouldn't know what to do with it. Well, this is, this is before we found out. Good. 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 That's really nice. I think that's really nice of me. Yes, it was. Very Absolutely. That's a great piece. <laughs> oh, Never question my friend's for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not from what I heard. The poopy doll is the best, though. I have to. I have to see the bottom the of this. I saw that and I just feel like anti -climactic. this is literally the Poultry in motion. Oh, Sharon Nayhouse, though. Yeah, okay, she did other stuff, too. Yeah. This is kind of funky. <laughs> Lisa Larson. Is that Lisa Larson? Oh, my gosh. I'm programmed by George to reject anything with a shit that I can't. It's not necessarily the thing <laughs> to do, though. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. Oh, my gosh. That's so fantastic. cool. How much was that? 120. Oh, that's still pretty good. Oh, I do like that. Is that, yeah. is that a lucite? lucite? Yeah. Yeah. Like the tortoise? Yeah. That's a great shape. It is. It's yeah. just like, and it's got great color to it. Yeah. Yeah. The amber and the tortoise really work. Yeah. I'm going to hold on to that one for a while. That is really cool. Well, it makes sense because, I mean, you know, yeah. you are Bengal girl. <laughs> oh, I forgot I was wearing this. Oh, yeah. Finally, I can be who I really want to be. <laughs> troll. The so troll great. keeper. <laughs> the troll keeper. <laughs> There it is, all. It's got to be 40 inches tall. 41, I think. 41? Wow. They had it on the tag. <laughs> 41 and a half. What is it? We Anderson Design. No, what is this bird? Um, like a sniper, a uh, woodcock thing? It's, it's a short bird of some sort. Oh, it's a short bird? Yeah. It's yeah. like Oh, I see the mark, yes. Mm, it's very faint on that one. But I have it in a bronze glaze. Very cool. Well, what a bunch of great finds in a great mall and a bunch of great people to share this with. I can't wait to come back here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.